Hello everyone, it's the Grand Strategy Nerd bringing you another episode of Kami Aussie, our little jaunt of 12 episodes through the new Together for Victory DLC for Hearts of Iron 4. Just a disclaimer once again that this has been recorded uh, well in advance of when its uh, air date is, and that's just because of the holidays. So I do thank every one of you for watching, um, and I hope that uh, you appreciate just the time constraints I'm under. I am married, I have two kids, and so it's just hard around the holidays to find time to record. In our last episode, we are basically on the verge of World War. I'm expecting it to be called any time here. Uh, German Reich is uh, trying to justify war goals against us. And probably against the Allies here. So we, we do need to keep on moving quickly in order that we get some of these, these benefits. Because I'm not going to war uh, with them. I... I I'll wait with the Soviets and see what they do. What are... Um, Alright, so their opinion of us is at 100. And I guess we'll formalize with a non-aggression pact. Alright, so the Union has accepted our request for a non-aggression pact. Poland has joined the Allies. I believe we also have a non-aggression pact. Okay, so it called our arms request, so we're going to decline that. And I think we have non-aggression with what well, we do not. Okay, so we will start that. And then let us look for... I don't really have any land lease, and the volunteers requires a whole army to go, so we're not going to do that as we just changed up our army a bit. And they are, um, oh, okay, it looks like they have completed all of their training and integrated the new units into, uh, into the force. They have, <laughs> they have 72 Owen guns on that the infantry division. And it looks like they all have about that same. Oh, they're waiting for some still. They're waiting for two support equipment. That was odd. Oh, it's probably because of the training. It's cavalry. I was like, why, why are the numbers so low there? Oh, yeah, so each one of these, look at this, each one of these support is 11, almost 12,000 manpower, and we only have 27,000, so we are in no state to go to war right now. There's the advanced machine tools. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's look now for... That's factory repair speed, which we do need in order to jump up to the next construction speed here. Or encryption. Um, yeah, why don't we... I think we should focus still on this. Beefing up the... Uh, beefing up the industry still, the infrastructure, still focusing on that instead of jumping right into uh, direct military um, military bonuses with the research that we're doing. And plus, we are able to, to get to some of these other ones, um, to get research slots other ways. German interests in Scandinavia. German rhetoric has intensified towards the northern countries in recent weeks. The message is clear. Denmark and Norway must in no way, whether by opposition or inaction, hamper German, hamper German imports. While there's no immediate obvious cause for such demands, as imports are still flowing freely to Germany, our diplomats were that this is a prelude to German action in the region. It's entirely true. And there's war on Luxembourg. So what we don't want to happen is... The East Indies to yeah is to join the Allies. That would be a bad thing. Looks like we have some military factories freed up. Looks like we got another one built. Um, do we have another one of these? We do not. Okay. 
Let's continue to focus. That will drop down. What are we missing now? Steel. Told you that steel would be a problem. Um, I don't really want to trade for it right now either. We'll go without for a bit. Uh, we annex Luxembourg. That did not take long. Okay, we're going to go with a limited conscription. Let's see. Finish that. Yep. So that boosted us up a good bit. We are still not going to be training anyone, though. Uh, that'll be drawn down on our very little amount of... of um, a very small amount of manpower still. <clears throat> All right, so we're still not going to break with them. This is where we leave the allies, which we don't want to do. Um, uh, let's see, that's just aluminum and oil, so we don't want to look at that. That requires us to be at war. Start uranium mining. Uh, civilian to military construction, don't, conversion, don't need that. Okay, let's look over here. Support artillery. All right, I guess we'll start researching some of these military tech then. China has capitulated. The Chinese government has gone into exile, and their main force have capitulated Japan, who is now in control of their home area. The struggles in China, China was only a small part of the conflict. War between Japan and what remains of the Chinese United Front continues elsewhere. Well, that's not good for our Chinese brothers, as they are now going to feel the full force of Japan. I just don't know how to help them out when I just I don't have a lot of men myself. Oh, how's that? Oh, they oh they annexed them. People's Republic of China was annexed. Reorganized Nationalist China was puppeted. Jibei San Ma Free State was puppeted. Yunnan Free Empire. Wow. So what, these are these are fascists now, right? Yeah. Whoops. Wow, that uh, that's not good. And they are they are communist up here. Yeah, we'll improve relations. Mongolia has accepted a non-aggression pact, as I thought they would. And Tanu Tuva, Xian Kiang joined the common intern. All right, and then we'll get them on our side, non-aggression back to them. So we are bringing ourselves closer to the common intern. Still don't know if we want to go that route or not, uh, but I'm assuming that we are going to have to make that decision shortly um, in order to keep this going. Now, oh, we, you know, we would get to annex New, New Zealand, maybe. What are we working on now? <clears throat> Excuse me, we are working on fact, military factory. And I guess, you know, it would bump up. Oh, they joined the Allies. German Reich declared war on the Netherlands. So now... All right. So they are part of the Allies now? Yeah. Okay, fall of Warsaw. Poland has capitulated. Moving very quickly. I mean, I do have it on five, obviously, but still. I'm just trying to get a, a handle on what's going on.
I think that soon we're going to have to make a break here. We'll do promote reservists first. And then we'll figure out what to do. Still don't know how to get out of this Great Depression, though. Because you would think that with all these advancements that we'd be beyond that. You know, just how we've gone about as, as a communist nation. But I guess not. With research, we're 15 days away from the new from our renowned class, which we'll immediately have to upgrade. We're not even going to start to build. Well, that's the problem with ships, too. It just takes forever. Especially when you don't have, don't have enough steel. That really puts a damper on things. And we only have two dockyards. So it looks like we're, we're getting up here on the efficiency of our equipment, though. So that is going to help us. How much does it take to remove these? Five. So I'm going to wait until the national focus gets done and remove those. There's just no reason to have that many. Well, man, there's just no reason to have that many infantry divisions. USSR occupies the eastern Poland. Soviet troops have occupied eastern Poland, officially for the purpose of protecting Belarusian and Ukrainian minorities from the chaos that followed the collapse of the, collapse of the Polish government. German forces have withdrawn from these areas in good order, resulting in Poland's effective partitioning. Why does it say a likely story? We're supporting our, our communist brothers. What's going on over here? 80 Dutch ships? Okay, there's the renowned class. And like I said, we're going to get right into here. And we're going to have to wait. Now oh, we can start now. Princess Royale class. I wish we could rename that. All right, we're going to get our industry, though. That'll be good. Get our concentrated industry done. We'll move over to... Um, probably construction. Or... Uh, let's, let's do resource, resource gain. Yeah, that'll that might help us with our steel extraction. We may get that one back. And then where are we with this? How many days left? We have twenty days left. So I think we're good. That's all right. We are once again still slowly, slowly growing our ranks. Well, now we're recruiting two hundred sixteen per month. Or recruitable, I should say. Yeah, I really do feel that the the main hindrance to this game of playing a small, um, a small nation of what do I want to say, do, 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 a small naval based or naval uh, nation with with water a coastal nation you know what i mean what i'm trying to say uh is that it, it really does take a long time to build the ships and so if you're already behind the eight ball because you're a minor nation it's just that much harder to play catch up i didn't i didn't embark when i was doing my fascist mexico playthrough i didn't um do any naval activities until after south america was conquered and i controlled most of it so i had the manpower uh well kind of i was always not really enough manpower, but um, where I had basically all the factory resources in order to sustain um, pretty pretty heavy investment into the ships and have have to get them built. I mean, that's one of the drawbacks here. It just takes forever to get ships built. And then when you think about it with how, in reality, how quickly the it took the U.S. to turn things around, it kind of makes it seem like like we're missing something. You know, why is it so much easier in the real world to get it done? All right, so we don't have any more rubber. We don't have any more steel. 
I may just have an unused one right now. So it'll slow down the building of my boomerangs, which I really don't want to slow down. I'm making one a week. Yeah, see, so we're down on it. What are we not getting now? Ah. Available planes in reserve. Okay, I know. All right, so let's go national focus. I know. Yeah, I say we, we start kicking this down the, kick, kicking this can, and now we don't need that. That's fine. Ooh, come on. All right, so we'll go to commitment for the cause. Let's see what we can get here if we can get any uh, one one day activities done, uh, research, any of that done. Mm -hmm. We should be able to declare our independence then. How quickly is this getting done now? Oh, good within them. In the month. I'm going to move Tasmania up here just so we have that infrastructure. Good. Netherlands has capitulated. These are dark times. Who oh, no. Yeah, we'll put Queensland pretty far down there. Okay, so let's see, that's only 10%, 134 days for those. That's 56 days, that's 56 days. That might be the one we do. Oh, here's 52 days for prepared defenses. No room, no big research here. Okay, so we're going to go here to prepare defenses. Get that. We should have enough. Yeah, so we'll get that done before commitment to the cause is over, so we'll still get the benefits of it, which is what I was hoping for. How much does each of these divisions take up? Uh, Finland rejects Soviet demands. All right, so this requires... Um, manpower. 11.8 thousand. Oh, that's right, just like all my other ones. Okay. We're going to remove these. And now I don't have enough to add, but that's okay. We've reduced the amount of manpower. I wish we could put some, not like tanks, but uh, some artillery on here would be nice as well. So, what do I need to do about that? Do I, do I just need to train them? Yeah, you also. Oh wait, what? Um, let me just see what that said again. Uh, your country will also gain army experience from each unit whose experience level is at least trained. Okay, so that still will. Okay, we're gonna have to use that then. So I don't really want to do that, but it's the only way to gain the experience, and it's so little from the exercises. But it's the only thing I can do. I need to build that up so I can have enough to to modify that template to make it better, basically. Alright, so this is kind of how the Asia is looking not too good. Um, well, we're definitely in this war, even though we're not taking part of it. It's 100% world tension, so we have that we have that to deal with. All right, everyone. 
I thank you for watching this episode of Kami Aussie. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to click on that thumbs up. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. And if this is your first time here, thank you for watching. Please click on that red subscribe button. Let's me know that I'm doing a great job and that you want to see more Grand Strategy games from me, the Grand Strategy Nerd. Till next time, everyone. Good night and good luck. Thank you.